Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wang Chao. I'm an engineer from the PyTorch core team at Meta, uh, working on distributed training. Uh, today, I'm going to talk a bit about our ongoing work to integrate the XLA backend uh, with the DTensor API uh, using the PyTorch XLA GSPM, uh, sorry, PyTorch XL SPMD. So, uh, PyTorch introduced the DTensor or distributed tensor API in uh, the PyTorch 2 release, and it's a fundamental distributed tensor abstraction that could allow user to perform tensor level sharding computations. DTensor uh, brings a bunch of uh, composability advantages. First, it actually allowed the PyTorch eager program to express this uh, uniform tensor sharding layout uh, across different parallelisms. And uh, this help uh, different parallelism to better compose together and uh, provide a very efficient uh, uh, distributed checkpoint solution to the user. The second is that uh, DTensor offers this uh, uh, sharded computation uh, uh, user model ordering easily in the SPMD or single program multiple data cell. The third is that uh, currently DTensor is actually uh, the backend of the PyTorch native Tensor Parallel API, which is also a prototype release we recently introduced. So DTensor itself. Uh, could do could fundamentally uh, do sharding on a tensor dimension over a set of devices, or it can do a replication over a set of devices. We can see that a user just need to uh, specify a device mesh, and there's this uh, placement called shard and replicate to describe that uh, how do you want to place your big tensor into this uh, device mesh. And uh, user uh, the detensor allow this uh, pretty complicated sharding layout like the you can shard it on a subset of device and then replicate on a subset of device, and this can be easily expressed by the device mesh and the placements combo. So talking about the detailed API, DTensor offers this uh, distributed tensor API that takes a tensor, uh, which can be a tensor that lives on CPU, can be a tensor that lives on meta device uh, that does not hold any data, and uh, it also takes a device mesh to tell that uh, how is your device organized, and then takes a placement to tell that how your uh, big tensor is going to be placed into this device mesh. And then this distributed tensor API will automatically uh, partition the data, uh, uh, for example, your data on CPU, and then move the corresponding shards to the, to the device specified by the device mesh, and then return a D-tensor that holds all the shards on the device. So how to use it? We can see that uh, uh, is a user just need to do this init device mesh call that uh, create a device mesh and then uh, give any big tensor uh, that uh, pass into this distributed tensor and the return tensor are just D tensors, which is a tensor subclass that uh, the PyTorch tool offers. And this uh, D tensor can also tell, tell up the tensor operation on top of the return object so that you can do the whatever tensor operation you want with Torsha tensor. Uh, it is important to, to, to mention that uh, the tensor operation happen on D-tensor will automatically propagate the sharding and run the collectives when needed. This works uh, perfectly fine for the eager backend like uh, CUDA and GPU, and user could just like uh, do some tensor operation, inspect the intermediate values, et cetera. Uh, it's also, uh, I also want to point out that uh, DTensor promotes this uh, SPMD style, and uh, we want to achieve the goal that a user can just program your model as if you are in a single device. So talking about uh, a bit about the goal of like integrating the XLA backend using the PyTorch XLA SPMD. So the fundamental goal here is that we want to provide a consistent uh, uh, user experience uh, for the PyTorch core API acro across different uh, device backends. For example, whether you are a CUDA device or you are XLA device or a CPU device, uh, you are a customer, uh, like this custom device that developed by, by some special backend, things should uh, work seamlessly. And second is that DTensor as a tensor abstraction, it should be device agnostic. Specifically on the XLA device, user could still use DTensor to express a sharding computation with the XLA uh, backend in, in the SBMD way. The third is that uh, uh, for PyTorch XLA, uh, we have implemented this uh, uh, SBMD uh, training already, and uh, but we don't want to diverge from the user experience for, from, for the general distributed training API in PyTorch core. 
So we have this integration proposal that uh, we want to integrate the XLA lazy backend with the DTensor API uh, using the existing PyTorch XLA SPMD, uh, which is re also recently released. Uh, this is actually an ongoing work between uh, the core team and uh, the XLA team. So let's take a look at uh, how this API gonna be like integrate. So what we want to achieve here is that uh, uh, we can see the, the, the first paragraph here is a, a normal DTensor program that uh, works on the CUDA device and user just need to like initialize the de uh, device mesh and call the DTensor API distribute tensor and uh, it will automatically partition your thing. But uh, for, uh, we, we want to achieve for the same thing for XLA. Uh, the idea here is that uh, user just need to swap this uh, device type when creating their device mesh and uh, calling distribute tensor will provide the same experience uh, with your eager backend. This can be achieved by like underlying the API, we, we checking the device type and uh, routing the corresponding call to the mark sharding when it's XLA. Yeah, so for the next, I, I'm gonna invite my Google colleague Yanan to talk more about XLA SPMD and uh, how this integration is gonna be. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Lampard. <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm Yano and from PyTorch XLA team. And before we continue with the rest of the integration story, let's take a step back and quickly uh, let us uh, take a look and uh, at the introduction to PyTorch XLA SPMD. So basically, this is a new API that we're introducing in PyTorch XLA to bring XLA GSPMD into PyTorch. So the, the GSPMD, I think many of us are probably already familiar, but just to reiterate, transforms a single device program into a partitioned one using XLA compiler. And that transformation is transparent in a sense that the sharding propagation and collect, uh, collective communication injection is all taken care of by um, the compiler without user doing anything explicitly. So the only thing the user needs to provide to use this feature is to uh, call uh, what we call like mark sharding, sharding annotation APIs to provide or indicate their sharding intentions on a, on a handful of tensors in the model. If you look at the example on the right, we have a simple PyTorch training loop and I highlighted the mark sharding API calls in yellow and use, um, basically the point here is that, you know, you don't have to annotate every single tensor in the model, model or even the data. Right. And also the other thing is you can use this simple annotation API to express or implement the, um, the tensor parallelism as well as the data parallelism. So in this example, the, the top API call is actually annotating the, the linear layer, the weight from the simple linear module model. And the one in the middle of the training loop is actually annotating the data uh, for data parallelism. And uh, this feature obviously relies on XLA GSPMD and is available for XLA backend, like XLA devices. Um, yeah, so GSPMD compiles and executes an S SPMD computation. So that means we can also integrate PyTorch XLA SPMD to distribute tensor for more consistent user experience for PyTorch community, as well as to uh, more standardized distributed uh, API design. So in a sense, we can actually start replacing the mark sharding API call with this uh, DTENS API district tensor. Uh, yeah, and then once the user calls this DTENS API, you know, it, the user will end up with the same result as, as if they are running uh, this program specifically for uh, the CUDA backend or for XLA backend. But the, the, uh, what actually happens under the hood behind the scene is the compiler uh, optimizes and petitions this program and um, utilizes all the all the accelerators. Okay, and, and to call the mark sharding sharding annotation API using the DTENS API, we actually have to convert, um, do some work. Like we have to convert the input uh, for the DTENS APIs, namely like device mesh and placements to XLA sharded tensor which is sort of the district tensor abstraction for um, PyTorch XLA SPMD uh, version of them. So mesh and partition spec. So the, 
in case of a mesh, it's the conversion is straightforward because the D tensor mesh and the accelerated tensor mesh, they both describe the logical device topology by shape and the device IDs. But then in case of uh, uh, D tensor placements, right, the, how the user wants to shard or place the, the shards to different devices, it's, it's a bit more involved just because the indexing scheme is different. Right? So at the very high level, just to give a flavor of the problem, the details of placement describes how each mesh axis is mapped to the um, the input tensors uh, dimension and by what sharding strategy. But on the other hand, we have XLA sharded tensor partition spec that describes how each input tensor dimension is mapped to the mesh dimension. So, so sort of like the the so the orientation is reversed, I think. Um, but we can still do it. We've been we've been testing with our POC, and this has been working. We had no problem actually uh, converting and implementing this simple use cases where the shards are fully tensors are fully sharded across all the accessible devices and also replicated. And we will uh, continue with the more advanced sharding strategy like a partial tiling or XLA. And lastly, uh, the sort of the next step for us to enable this full integration into D tensor API is making the XLA sharded tensor as a subclass of D tensor. This is important because the D tensor APIs, it returns D tensor. And we don't want to make an exception and return something else that might have some um, might have some different behaviors and semantics around uh, certain elements of the sharded tensor. Right? Uh, this is still in uh, in progress, ongoing investigation. But uh, the key here is that we want to um, we want to make sure that when we inherit the D tensor for XLA sharded tensor, we don't violate any RFP and make sure that we can cover this, all the necess all the core API and functionalities from the D tensor, even for the XLA uh, backend. Um, yeah, and I'm just listing some of our next steps for the integration and how we want to actually support the XLA backend from the D tensor, the PyTorch native distributed APIs. And in addition to making the XLA Shari tensor uh, a subclass of D tensor, we also want to, we are also looking at this uh, another core API from the D tensor package, the distribute module. This is um, the API that recursively calls distribute tensor on the, the sub modules and the layers from a given module. And I think this could be a, uh, another good integration point where we can actually introduced uh, PyTorch XLA SPMD's policy-based mark sharding, annotation, or auto sharding as well. Um, the other thing is, uh, I think Shawin also briefly touched on this, the Dynamo Torch Compile is a new uh, initiative, initiative that's, that's released in PyTorch uh, 2.0, and I think the effort and the maturity is continuously growing. Um, we want to Dynamo uh, started capturing the D tensor but also we are working to make sure that Dynamo support our sharding annotation API. And when it when the D tensor and the, the XLA Shari tensor, PyTorch XLA SPMD uh, gets integrated. So we, we want to make sure that uh, we don't diverge and we continue to support the Dynamo and the grab capturing there. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And if you have any questions, um, yeah, free, please feel free to reach out to us at PyTorch and PyTorch XLA project. Um, yeah, thank you. Anyone in the room have any questions for our presenters? Oh. So like custom layers, custom ops, do you provide an API or do we have to specify how the sharding is propagated for those layers? Is that part of the plan? Custom ops for PyTorch? Uh, yeah, let's say you download it and you have a special CUDA implementation, for example, for a specific module. Uh, I see. So we don't 
PyTorch Excel, I think it has to go back to PyTorch XLA, how the PyTorch program is converted and executed on, PyTorch, on let's say, the XLA device through PyTorch XLA. But we don't directly use, say, CUDA kernels. We have our own version of uh, like lowered ops. So for given PyTorch ops, if we provide, we are, we are already providing sort of the, the custom lowering for that operation, and it gets later compiled into the, the program that runs on, say, XLA TPU, for example. And if you want to provide your custom implementation for certain op, you can definitely do that. And Sounds good. What about the XLA custom op? That has a hook to specify how to... Yeah, okay, yeah. Got it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, for the, for the, for the, for the eager, like, uh, custom op, I think uh, the individual will, will, will figure out a way for a user to register their own sharding. 